Good day, one and all. My name is Kathy, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the Scrap and Crafty Gardener. Today, I'm going to do a card based off um, an idea I saw on Iced Images, and I'll have her video linked below. Uh, she makes a 5 by 7 what she calls a triple faux step card. And I'm going to take that idea and put a twist on it of my own using a whole bunch of different products today. Um, let's get started. We'll talk about the products as we do it. The first thing we need is a piece of 12 inch long by seven inch piece of cardstock. And I don't have cardstock that is quite heavy enough for a base weight, but I did a test run and when this is folded, it works out perfectly. Uh, this is just from Joanne Fabrics. Now we need to score this. Okay. So I got my big Martha Stewart scoreboard out because that's the size I need. Uh, now we need to score this, and I wrote down all my measurements here. We need to score this at, get it right here in the corner. Let's try this way. Scored at one inch. Oh, I forgot I wanted to do this. Why? Well, I did I am doing it upside down. One inch. I'm doing it upside down because this is not a solid core piece of cardstock. And when you fold it over without doing it from the back, you can see the white. So you score it at one inch, two inch, four inch, six inch, and nine inch. Okay. And then you just start uh, hill and valley folding this. Now I'm just going to crease it gently with my bone folder. Okay, so you have something that looks like that, and that'll be your stairs. And you can see a little bit of the white showing through on my cardstock, but that's going to be covered up in these areas, even that little blip there at the corner. Then you need one piece that measures three inches wide by 10 inches long, and I'm going to score it at the five inch mark and fold that, and I'm not gonna crease that one with my bowl folder. Then you need two pieces of one and a half inch by eight inch long, and I'm gonna score that at the four inch line. Okay, and then these will get folded in half. We'll go the other way with that one since a little bit white was showing. All right, now she had hers um, matted in a couple of different layers and I'm not gonna do that for all my pieces. I am have this wonderful, it's a it's the size of a slimline die and it cuts out this lattice and I honestly don't know what company this is from. I'm, I wanna say it's Gina K. Um, but I don't know for positive it. I'll try looking it up and see if I can find it online. And if it is, I'll list below what it is. Um, and I'm going to use this and I have cut out two. So I'm going to take these and unfold these two pieces of blue. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue them down to this until I get the piece of scratch paper here. I'm going to use this lattice as the backing on the sides. Okay. I'll get out my smaller glue bottle. And I'm not really sure how much glue I need to put down here, so I'm gonna just go across sideways. If you have um, double-sided sticky tape that you like to use, put it on and then cut this out. Um, I don't have that. If you have a Xyron sticker maker, you can use that. I don't have that. So it'll just take me a moment here to get all this glue down. Okay. 
Now I'll just go a little bit like every other one across. And that should be enough glue to hold us down. If I'm figuring correctly. If not, we'll just add a little bit of a glue wherever it needs it when we're done. Okay, so I'm going to take these two strips, glue them down. And then I'm just going to set this aside to dry. Because then when it's dry, I will cut them in two. Okay. And now I'm just going to do that for the front of this. So I'm not going to need as much. So I think I'm only going to need down to about here. So this is where I'll start putting the glue. I just like this um, lattice. And I haven't really used it for much. I'm not even sure why I bought it. Maybe it came with a kit. But it is beautiful. But I don't, I don't do slimline cards. At least yet. This may seem long, but this is actually the quickest part of making this card. And if you go to um, Iced Images YouTube, you'll be able to see um, what she does with the layering. Of course, I have to go a little bit more complicated. So. Now I will cut off the end that I don't need here. And I'll put this in my scraps and I can use it for something else. This went over the edge a little bit. I will cut that off once this is dry. So we're just going to tuck this under here too. Oh, and I'll set aside my glue paper. Now, for the inside, I've decided to make a die I haven't used before. This is the Spellbinders Typing Class. So I'm going to cut out this typewriter, and it's going to go on that center panel. We have other pieces of paper that I'll show you what they're for in just a moment. This typewriter was a little complicated for me. You cut out two of the typewriter image, and then on one of these, you cut this top off. I don't know why. I honestly, oh yeah, that one will go in the back, but how I'm using it is going to be a little bit different. So we're just going to glue these two pieces together. That's what the directions say is to cut that back off. Well, uh, the tab, they call it a tab. So maybe you can make this a three-dimensional. I haven't looked up any videos on how to use it. Now, I cut out, um, you have two, I, you get this little square, and then you can put a note, happy, to say, I chose birthday, and I cut out the word birthday. Looks like that. And I'm going to glue that down right to the top of the typewriter here. I guess I do still need my glue sheet. That tab we don't need. This is just a lot of little fussy pieces that you have to put together. I think it's going to look cute. I cut out a lot of these. I cut these all out offline because it took quite a while. Now I'm just going to Get that down, and then I'm going to daub up any extra glue that seeped out. It will dry clear. So that says birthday. Now you have the keyboard parts. And if you follow the directions, it tells you to cut the keyboard, which I did, uh, three key strips. Now the key strips are, where are they? They're these little pieces here. However, the die comes with... Um, two key strips and the, the space bar. So you had to cut it out twice. 
so you end up with four key strips. Now these are kind of different. I need to put these at the top like that. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get these on here. I guess I'll just glue the, this whole backer. Go across the top. If I would have looked up a video on how to use this die, but I think I could muddle together something that um, will work. Now these need to go across the top because I'm making just this, the top of the typewriter. Oh, yeah, we'll put this one in the middle. Nope, needs to go across. Come on, oh well. Goodness gracious. This is not gonna be as easy as I thought. The top of my keys, I want to be silver. Like on a vintage typewriter. So there we go. So now this piece can go, all right. Just getting it lined up, that's the, the key here. Oh, I see those little, I apologize if I go off screen here. Uh, I just kind of need to see close up to these typewriter keys and how they're gonna look. Like that. And I gotta get one more in there, but I'm taking all the glue off with my fingers. This one will go that looks pretty good now this will get I'm going to glue that to the black one because I want the bottom of the keys to be black and I see I got a piece sticking out over here these are not as fun to put together as it looked like they might be. <laughs> now it did cut out all the keys separate. I guess I could have just done that. Um, and then just put them in manually. All right, so that is gonna go here. That's a flower stem. And that'll go like that. And I cut out an extra backing piece because I wanted this to stick up a little bit. I got a little key sticking out here at the end. So we'll just trim that off. Not looking too bad. Okay, and then that'll go across there like that. Down. Now, I had to cut out a couple of space bars, uh, and I wanted my space bar to be silver, so I got a black piece here just to um, make it a little higher. And then I am going to pop this up with just a little sliver of eighth inch foam tape so that the space bar sticks up further than the rest of the keyboard. Just for perspective. And that'll go right there. Okay, now, I cut out a piece of paper. This measures 
four and a half inches by two and a half inches. I only went two and a half inches wide because I want it to stick out the back of the typewriter and I need to trim it just a little. It's a little too wide. So maybe two and a quarter uh, would be a better width, uh, but I'm just gonna use my scissors and go for it here. And that's gonna be sticking up from the typewriter. I wanted to put a saying on this. Um, I have some stamps that I got, oh, they're up here hiding, from Honeybee Stamps. This was Take a Ride. Um, there was one that says, lucky for you, vintage is in. So I wanna type that, or type that. <laughs> I wanna stamp that on the typewriter paper, just below happy. And then I'm gonna take a scrap piece of the gray to fill in. But I'm gonna color these with um, black. All right, so let's get out my Misty. Put the glue back on its cap and set it in its bottle. Now I wanna put Lucky For You Vintage is in just below the happy. And well, let's put this in the corner. This is a new stamp that I haven't used, so it needed conditioned which makes it extra sticky. All right. Now to condition it, you just, there's a little film that comes on it from the manufacturing process. And of course I need to clean that off now because I have glue on my fingers. And I got a little bit of glue on this stamp. We don't need that on there. Okay, and I'm gonna use VersaFine Clear Nocturne. I can see another piece of glue. And we'll rub that down. Not bad. Do it one more time. All right, and that can sit off there and I'll just clean that off with a little bit of water. this piece of, oh, I wanted to color that first. I have my um, Wink of Stella in glitter black, and I'm just gonna color the letters happy birthday, or happy. Just so it has a little bit of color difference. I could have put black paper behind it, but then the old fashioned typewriters didn't print with a, an outline. They only printed, they only typed what you told it to. So that'll give it just a little bit of a, I need to do a little bit more on that bottom of that P here to make it look like it, the typewriter typed that. Now we'll just glue that to the back here. Okay. And then I'll trim that on the side there because I cut my paper a little smaller before. There we go. Now that'll be com coming out of the back of the typewriter so I can actually make this a little smaller now. And I'm just gonna use some double-sided adhesive tape for this one. Well, take the cap off it. There, it looks like it's coming out of the typewriter. Now, also, there are other parts to the typewriter that I will put on once we have, I guess there's a little slot you could have put your paper in, but I like it like this. 
Okay. Now I'm gonna take these two strips and just cut them apart. And then trim off, you could use your paper trimmer for this, but I'm trimming off the extra pieces that are here on the side. So that'll make a nice side piece. Just like that. All right, pick up some of these scraps here. Put my blue bottle back upside down. Now, to get this all together now, oh, I didn't. The center, I am leaving the, the edges on the side of that because I think that looks nice to have the edges showing. This is gonna get glued to the back center here and come down to this middle flap. So what I, what you do is put this in the middle flap first. So I need to put glue. Oh, I haven't, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. We need to decorate this base piece. All right, so on, all right, I had it upside down. For this bottom piece, you use a strip that is one half inch by six and a half inches. And you just glue that down center. Yeah, we gotta decorate it up first. And we don't put anything here, but then this piece needs a strip that is one half inch by six and, oh, not a half inch. This is one and a half inches by six and a half inches. Get my story straight. I'll have the measurements um, listed down below too, so that you can see. Now this piece has you cut two, two and a half by six and a half, and we'll put one here and one back here. And now when um, Iced Images did hers, she used um, a matte layer behind this piece, but I kind of liked how the blue looked um, without a matte layer. But if you want a matte layer, um, just go a quarter inch bigger on your paper. So those two pieces go like that. And then this piece is, how big is this one? This one is four and three quarters by two and three quarters. And that's gonna go right on the back of here. And this is where you can write your sentiment. So if you wanted to, you could put, um, not your sentiment, but your message to the card receiver. So you could do this in plain white, but this blue pattern is light enough that I can write on it um, without any problem. And I got a little bit more glue needed right in there. Okay. So now this is how this looks. So now we'll take This will come up to the front and go down to the back. So we're gonna glue the back down first because if you glue the front down first, you won't be able to put on the side pieces. So now we know where this needs to go. I'm just gonna lift this up and put my glue right in the center. So make sure 
you're in the flap you want to be. And you won't come totally down to the bottom of your card here as if you had moved it all the way down um, to the back, you wouldn't have been able to fit this just so in the front. Now these pieces will come in here and go down to the front. And you want them to go down to the front first, if I remember correctly. Or do we want, yeah, they need to go down, all the way down to the bottom on the front. Now I chose to put mine all the way to the corner, whereas Iced Images moved hers in slightly. But especially since my paper had this little um, nick out of the corner. That's why I decided to do it this way. And then that covers that nick up nicely and gives a nice clean edge. Now we fold our card this way and glue these down here. Just like that. And just like that. Now this piece we bring up and glue down. So I need glue from about here down. Get that right down to the bottom and fold it up. And this is how it's looking. Okay. So my typewriter is gonna sit right in here and it pretty much covers up the back lace design, but I still wanted to put it in there. Now I'm going to pop this up just a little bit with that foam tape. You could glue it down flat um, where did I put my foam strips? Ah, there they are, hiding under that. cap back on my glue while I'm thinking of it. We only have a little bit more to go on this card. I can never just do anything simple. I have to add layers of complication. But that's how my process works and that's what makes my cards. Now this, I'm gonna put right down in there. And I, th I think I will, I'll put it all the way to the bottom. Put that like that. Now we need to color some flowers because I wanna put some flowers on each side piece here. And I'll just use my glue paper here. And I don't know if I'll use all the greenery or not. For the flowers, I have chose two colors of Alcohol Inks Blue. I have B294 Galaxy Blue, which is my lighter color, and B384 Hydron Blue, which is my darker color. So I'm just going to use, um, on the larger pieces, these will be my lighter colored flowers. I tried to pick some blues um, that would go with the... Uh, dark blue background and the light blue flowers. 
and I'm just putting a couple layers on here. And I only wanted one flower for each side because this, these sides are a little small. Now for the bot, this is the base of the flower. And these come with that typewriter um, element. They have more leaves, different kinds of flowers, small leaves, and then the stem of the flowers. So these I wanna do in the darker blue. Get down there. And you can be um, not as precise when you're doing this because if you get a little bit more ink in one spot than the other, that gives you a little bit more of a shading element. So if you're not the greatest colorist, you can say, hey, that was my design element. And then this will go together like that. I have a lot of design elements in my life. <laughs> Things don't work out. Oh, that's how I designed it to be. Now for the greens, I've got um, G369 Matcha Green, which is my lighter color, and G364 Seedling Green, which is my darker color. And I think I want to use, I'm going to turn the leaves over. The leaves over. So we're gonna go with my matcha green first. And I, I don't think I'm gonna use all the greenery. I'm doing the leaves themselves in the lighter color. And then I wanna do the stems in the darker color and then put some dark accents on these. And these may not look good on here. Uh, I will try them and see what I think. Just an idea I had. You never know till you try it, right? Now for the stems. I want one stem going one way and one stem going the other way. And it's okay to turn these over. They're not embossed. Um, uh, so there, it really doesn't matter unless your paper has a texture side or a smooth side. But since I want my flowers to be facing each other or maybe even away from each other, that I haven't decided yet. Um, now we'll just do a little shading with the darker on some of the leaves. Now you could have also colored um, these in with your uh, mark, your not your markers. Yeah, you could you could use mar regular markers, um, colored pencils. You could use your stamp pad inks and do some ink blending on them. Now I want to put one leaf on, and let's see how this is going to look. We'll hold one up just to see. I think I want the flowers going off in the opposite direction. So let's hold this down. Pull my stem off. But I'll have the, the leafery going in and the flower going out. If that makes sense. So the leafery will be going in and the flower will be going the other direction. This is a very narrow stem. I may not use the whole stem. In fact, I think I am going to cut it off. I will cut it off right at the bottom.
Now we'll do the same on the other side. The leaf going in. So it kind of frames the typewriter a little bit. And, okay. Oh, there's a stem. Almost done. Just have to add a little bling. Have that about the same location and bring the stem down. Now I'm going to wipe up a little bit of glue here. Just use a wet wipe and it'll, well, you get one that's actually wet. There we go. Okay, so that's, that's it with the flowers. It actually looks kind of nice. Now I'm going to just bling it up and then we'll be done. I have brought out several different colors. I've got this pale blue, which I'm going to opt out of. I've got gold. I have silver, which would look pretty or clear. I'm opting out of the blue and that. Um, I could do... Oh yeah, I'll do some of these in the uh, the darker blue, which is the hydrant. Let's color a couple of these. We'll do a couple big ones, a couple medium ones, and I already have some little itty bitty ones that are close enough in color. All right, let's see where I wanna put some now. I think I want a big one up here on the typewriter paper on each side of happy. And, uh oh, oh, there it is. Didn't go flying across the room. I wanna put one here and a medium one over here in the same location. And then I think just three little ones. There, that's all. Okay, I hope you enjoyed my process. Um, I'll include a link to Iced Images uh, YouTube channel. She makes a lot of wonderful five by seven cards and different size cards. But that's my take on her card. So thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day.